Hey guys, I'm back. So I found what I was looking for. I need to go to the back of the vehicle. There's a scorpion. Scorpion collectors. I just don't get it. Luckily, this is not covered by our warrant. And, um... There's a gun. He's just got it laid out there like... Oh, yeah, I'm not even going to try and hide it. Ah, uh, yes, the Mysterious 22. At last we meet. Awesome. Is there anything else in here? There's a scorpion. There's... There was the gun. Anything? Anything else? Uh, okay. Looks like I'm out of here. It was a pleasure investigating your vehicle so let's now go to our lab um, I'm pretty sure we need to uh, process this um, uh, yeah you know what I'm trying to say uh, go to assembly I think We've done all we can do with that. Oh, item. darn. That's not what I wanted. Let's fire off the The weapon's unloaded, but the barrel's been tampered with. Somebody scraped the inside of it. Maybe they were trying to discourage ballistics matches. Probably. The gunpowder from Landers 22 matches the second type of powder found on the 45 automatic? Interesting. Okay. Well. So everything's checked off here. I wonder, I probably have to do the ballistics um, match on here. And uh, the one from, not from the bot. well. The striations don't match, which is not a shock, considering the barrel's been tampered with. So I'm not ready to rule this out as the murder weapon. It would be nice to know whether this gun was futzed with before or after the crime. Our ousted game designer either knowingly or unknowingly provided the bullets that killed his former boss. The problem is, somehow all three of our suspects fired these rounds. The electron microscope confirms the gunpowder found on the forehead wound matches all three of our suspects' hands. This definitely muddies the water a little bit. What's up? We have a real mystery here. Yeah. Let me Stop. lay it out for you. We have a 22 caliber bullet that we found in the body. Its GSR matches this box of 22 bullets. We also recovered a 22 handgun owned by one of the suspects and have found the same GSR traces on it. Okay. But ballistics don't match, so this weapon didn't actually fire the bullets into the Vic. Sounds like you need to find a different 22. Well, there's one more twist. The 45 handgun we found at the crime scene also has traces of the 22 bullets GSR on its hammer. But, as you know, it can't fire 22 rounds. Unless it's modified. That's true. But didn't I overhear something about modified rifles from the gun range? Yeah, but that's out. It only fired paint pellets. Same concept, Nick. How do you fire a non-standard bullet from a weapon? Modify the weapon. I go back to the gun shop and see what else they know. Cool. So let's go back to the gun shop. Let's ask her if she sells conversion kits for 45 to 22. We don't stock them, but they're easy enough to special order. Those kits are fairly popular, because they let you train with less expensive rounds. 22s are way cheaper than 45s, and more common, too. Heck, around here, you can buy 22 cartridges at convenience stores. Okay, let's ask her if she sold one. No, the only thing they bought was bullets. And ask how hard it is to install these. You don't have to be a gunsmith. Anybody who knows his or her way around a gun could do it in a couple of minutes. Don't even need special tools. Would you like to order one? 
No, thanks. We have our own sources. Maya. Maya knows our way. Uh, okay, let's see. Can you collect a 22 round fired by the green? Ugh. Can, we're asking her, can she collect a 22 caliber round fired by the game group? No problem. I'll pick one out of the wall for you. Great. Awesome. Thanks. I can't think of anything else for you. Oh, this is starting to get good. Oh, I want to go talk to Maya so bad. Just before I process the evidence to give her a chance. But I'm going to have to stop right here because I kind of ran over time in the last video and yeah see you guys in the next video okay guys so uh, I got to the place I was supposed to get and <laughs> forgot her name she came in and, and, and actually gave us an adapter that CSI already owns from the CSI reserves so this is it CSI owned adapter for converting the 45 caliber to a 22. Um, so I still don't see the purpose of doing something like that. I mean, oh, I got a 45 caliber gun, and you know, I don't want to use its bullets, so I'm gonna put in cheaper ones. So, anyways, this is what it looks like. Kind of neat. Um. Yeah, kind of neat. So, <clears throat> what we're going to have to do is, um, I guess we'd have to go to assembly table, put the adapter on there, let's see, where are you? There's a bullet from the gun club. There's a... Okay, there's the adapter. Oops. Cool. Pretty neat. Okay, um... See if we could take this out. Off. Put this on. Good job. Next stop. Ballistics lab. Cool. So it fits. It's great. Oh, I love how it just pops up and says, oh, by the way, yeah, here's the... Oh, this is the gun. This is the bullet. Um, oh, so we shot it, and this is what the ballistics show. Okay, so we actually took a bullet, a twenty two, um, with a modifier on there. Okay. Alright, so we do need to go to the ballistics lab. I mean, uh, to the <clears throat> microscope. Let's make sure I get the right bullets in here. So, it can be a little confusing, but you want to get the bullet from the 45 with our, with our own adapter in there. And, um... And compare that with the bullet that was um, in the wall, or actually in the body of the victim. Not from the gun club, but from the body. So, where are you? Bullet shot from 45. Um, bullet from the gun club. Bullet from 4X. Bullet shot from 45. Come on, where are you? Am I missing it? Uh, crap, where is it? There's a bullet shot from Craig's 22, bullet from the gun club, bullet shot from the 45. I can't believe this. Okay, there it is. Bullet from the body. Sorry about that. There we go. The striations on the spent bullets are similar, but not exact, to those found in Everston's body. 
This is not surprising, since our adapter clearly didn't shoot him. We need to find the actual adapter to confirm it. <sighs> Darn it. Well, where will we find that? Did they just show them throwing in the dumpster nearby? Did anyone see that? I wasn't really totally paying attention. I was, like, listening. <sighs> Alright. Off to Brass's office. Let's see, can you look for the gun adapter? I'll get my boys to start searching for it immediately. Check back later. Thanks. Um, let's talk to Maya. She's on her way to interrogation now. Somebody knows about this adapter. Okay, first let me check my time, be right back. Okay, I'm back. I have just a couple minutes. Let's ask her, how did Andy and Stan get along at work? Now we're talking about Andy, not Craig. Andy is the programmer, um, and he seems like a really mellow, cool guy, but that could just be his whole, you know, that could be a whole uh, facade, or it could be his whole smokescreen. They had a lot of history before I got there, you know? Like, they had tension sometimes, but there was also a bond. Almost like they could read each other's minds or something. By the end of the project, they were mostly staying out of each other's way. And, you know, maybe I'm out of line for saying this, but I don't know why Stan trusted the guy. Word around the office was, Andy's an old school hacker. What kind of old school hacker? The kind who likes to break into stuff. Recently, I let him install a version of GutWrench 3 on my computer. Only since then, my machine's been working really, really slow. Andy says he did nothing, but I think he accessed my files. Hmm. Interesting. Well, there was mention about a virus earlier on uh, the laptop. So maybe he was... Yeah, maybe he did something, you know. I mean, I don't see how just accessing the file would slow down your computer. All you're doing is accessing the file and reading it. You're not... Anyways, but my guess is he probably did something on there saw the virus or did something you know manipulated it so anyway cool i'm gonna cut it off here see you in the next video um we're starting to wrap this up so thanks for watching